Good afternoon. On today's Angry Bulletin. Off the coast of New Guinea, the search for an interstellar meteor continues. As expected, many things have been found, most of them natural, some of them man-made, but some of them may be something else entirely. And meanwhile, the last legitimate natural explanation from Oumuamua has now been officially shot down. And what remains? Well, obviously, an artificial explanation. All this and more on the latest bulletin from the Angry Astronaut coming at you right now. Good afternoon once again. Welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So lots of things buzzing in the whole UAP world, something that I generally don't focus on, as I've said a number of times, but there is just so much going on at the moment. It just needs to be covered. First of all, of course, Avi Loeb and the Galileo Project are dredging the bottom of the Pacific off the coast of New Guinea and have come up with more results. Obviously, a lot of these results being disappointing, things that obviously have a terrestrial origin, but not all of it. But first of all, we venture into the world of astronomical publications, a field where Avi Loeb is also extremely active as the previous chair of the astrophysics department at Harvard University. He and a colleague have published a paper that has essentially debunked the last remaining explanation for Oumuamua. So what remains? Obviously, an artificial explanation. And what sort of an explanation might that be? So this is what the scientific majority have continued to insist over the last six years that a Muamua must be. A comet or an asteroid of some kind, even though it clearly is not. First of all, a Muamua came from a location in the galaxy that corresponds with something called the Galactic Standard of Rest, meaning that it was motionless relative to the stars orbiting the galaxy around it, something that would be incredibly useful to a civilization who needed stationary buoys, navigational aids, that is, for interstellar travel. Secondly, a Muamua was highly reflective, not very much like an asteroid, but rather like something metallic and not a nickel-iron asteroid, far more reflective even than that. In addition to that, a Muamua also tumbled, and tumbled very consistently without ever changing. Now, that in itself is not tremendously unusual, but what is unusual usual is the fact that a Muamua, with no visible means of propulsion, began to accelerate out of the solar system. Oh yeah, it's also an incredible coincidence that a Muamua happened to pass directly through the Goldilocks zone of our star rather than passing through some other region of the solar system. That in itself was an incredible coincidence. But let's get back to that strange acceleration. This sort of thing happens all the time in the solar system. Comets and asteroids with water ice always tend to accelerate any time the sun shines on them because the heat of the sun can abruptly cause water ice to transform into a gaseous vent. This is the sort of thing that happens on the surface of comets or on the surface of moons like Enceladus or Europa. We've seen sort of this sort of thing over and over again. However, what was inconsistent about Oumuamua is we saw no visible evidence of this vent even though the object was under close observation by our most advanced astronomical instruments of the time. No evidence of any debris that would be associated with such venting, and no gases of any kind that could be detected. Oh yeah, and traditional venting should also have changed the rate of tumbling that Oumuamua was experiencing, and yet the tumbling rate remained constant and completely unchanged. And so this is what has created all of this debate over all of these years. Scientists like Dr. Loeb are argue that since only artificial means could possibly have created the behavior that we observed, a muamua must be an artificial object. 
and yet the scientific majority have continued to stubbornly insist that even though we don't understand this process, it must still be natural. At first, it was proposed that Oumuamua might be a hydrogen iceberg, then a nitrogen iceberg, but neither models were shown to be survivable in interstellar space. Both of these types of icebergs would have disintegrated. And then finally, an idea was proposed, whereby Oumuamua might have lost all of its water ice in interstellar space, and yet hydrogen remained trapped deep inside the asteroid. Hydrogen that eventually worked its way to the surface after Oumuamua made a close approach with the sun and then vented at the time that we observed it. And since our instruments were not set up to detect pure hydrogen, that must have been what caused the acceleration. Observation, you don't see a thing. Conclusion, it must be hydrogen. Now, of course, that is not necessarily the best scientific method I've ever heard of, but it was hailed by the scientific community as an elegant and absolutely valid explanation. Case closed. Except, of course, it isn't. Dr. Loeb, together with a colleague named Tham Huang, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, both of them, of course, very respected astrophysicists, have now produced a paper that debunks this explanation. I'm going to go ahead and read you a few excerpts from the paper and try to explain what these guys are getting at. Quote, Bergner and Seligman, hereafter referred to as BS-23, by the way, those are the two scientists who proposed the original explanation, proposed that evaporation of trapped H2 created by cosmic rays can explain the non-gravitational acceleration. However, their modeling of the thermal structure of Oumuamua ignored the crucial cooling effect of evaporating hydrogen. By taking into account the cooling by H2 evaporation, we show that the surface temperature of H2 water ice is a factor of 9 lower than the case without evaporative cooling. As a result, the thermal speed of outgassing hydrogen is decreased by a factor of 3, not enabling enough hydrogen to propel a muamua. Okay, let me try to explain what they're saying there. The original paper argued that hydrogen buried deep inside the asteroid, locked inside over the course of millions of years of exposure to the interstellar medium, would eventually be released after a close approach with the sun. However, this is simply impossible. Even if the hydrogen were trapped exactly as described, the cooling effect of evaporative hydrogen would have reduced the speed that the hydrogen was escaping. That is to say that the hydrogen wasn't escaping fast enough and with not enough velocity in order to produce the observed acceleration. The only way that their model works is if the entire surface area of Oumuamua was completely comprised of hydrogen. In other words, we're getting back to a hydrogen iceberg argument, and this is simply not valid. The whole argument was difficult to accept in the first place, but given all of the new calculations calculations involved with the cooling effect of evaporating hydrogen, it is now no longer possible for hydrogen alone to cause the acceleration. Assuming, that is, that hydrogen could even be trapped on its own with all of the oxygen in H2O somehow being lost in interstellar space, we have seen absolutely no observational data to confirm that this sort of process even happens anyway. The other interstellar object that passed through our solar system, most definitely a comet to I. Borisov, showed all of the characteristics of a comet. It obviously didn't lose its water ice in interstellar space. In addition, all of the comets in the Kuiper belt have still retained their water ice as well, even though they're exposed to the same conditions that interstellar comets would be exposed to. They have the same interstellar and galactic cosmic rays hammering their surfaces, and they do not lose their water ice. It was never a very valid argument to begin with, and it certainly isn't one now, but that doesn't seem to matter. Because when Dr. Loeb submitted these findings to a wide variety of science journalists across the planet, almost all of them said that their journals would not post a correction to the original report in order to, quote, not confuse the readers, unquote. 
And the opinions of some scientists began to get a bit bizarre. Yeah, you think people who believe in extraterrestrials are bizarre? Listen to this one. Quote, A co-author of an elaborate review paper on a Muamua told me last year that he believes that a Muamua actually had a cometary tail when we did not look at it, but did not show its tail when we looked at it. This is like saying that an elephant is a generic zebra that shows its stripes only when we look away from it. And by the way, what you're looking at right now is the proposed trajectory of a mission called Project Lyra that would send a fleet of light sails out to intercept a Muamua in the location where we think it might be given its current speed and trajectory, assuming, of course, that it hasn't accelerated again in that time. And by the way, if you're in the mood, go ahead and Google Amuamua and sort the news stories by date. You will find absolutely nothing that publicizes these findings from Dr. Loeb and his colleague. Completely unacceptable because this paper has not been refuted in any way. It has already been peer-reviewed and published. So what is going on here? Well, I don't think it's some sort of conspiracy. I really don't. I think it's a scientific community, a tyranny of the majority who simply refuse to accept that extraterrestrials could possibly be visiting us and they continue to cling to any natural theory they can think of regardless of how implausible rather than accept the obvious. It's just a matter of narrow-mindedness, not a conspiracy. So what is a muamua? if not a natural object. Well, Dr. Loeb figured that out years ago. He calculated what would a muamua have to look like if solar radiation alone could account for this acceleration. And what he came up with was an incredibly thin object and a highly reflective object. Not something unlike how a muamua appeared anyway, but something that could not possibly exist in nature because it was only a few millimeters meters thick. Now, to be fair, a muamua, as observed, does not make for a very good light sail. It's not reflective enough, but that could simply be the result of traveling through interstellar space for thousands or even millions of years. Indeed, even if a muamua's light sail was no longer really practical, it could still produce the observed acceleration as long as it was as thin as observed, because we have seen similar behaviors from empty cylinders left behind by our rockets. Reflective cylinders left behind by the upper stages of various rocket boosters also accelerate as a result of pure solar radiation. They have to be hollow, though, and they have to be light, something that an asteroid or a comet most definitely is not. So until we come up with a valid natural theory that stands up to even casual scrutiny, which thus far no natural theory has, we must, if we are going to be responsible about this, embrace every possibility, including artificial ones. And I'm not saying that light sails are the only possible solution. We should also look to other artificial solutions. Other scientists should propose their ideas, but thus far, only Dr. Dr. Loeb and those associated with them have the guts to do it because the rest of them are accused of being crackbots and madmen. And by the way, even I get subjected to that sort of treatment all the time in the comments section. And that gets even worse when we're talking about UAPs. Was a Muamua some kind of interstellar navigational buoy with a secondary mission to explore the Goldilocks zones of any appropriate stars and to seed those stars with Van Neumann probes capable of investigating habitable planets, checking out any civilizations that might be there and possibly even replicate themselves or even genetic duplicates of the creatures who made them? Well, thus far, that theory is a lot more valid than any of the natural theories that have been proposed thus far. So let's move on to the UAP search in the South Pacific. If you want more information about the background of this expedition, well, I have a video linked for you at the end of this one. But here's a quick summary. An interstellar meteor hit our planet, we think, in 2014 off the coast of New Guinea. However, that meteor may not have been a meteor because it didn't break apart in the same manner as traditional meteors. It survived far longer than it 
it should have, especially at the velocity it was traveling. Therefore, it was comprised of an extremely strong material, twice as strong at least as any iron meteors. That being the case then, they might be looking for something very unusual off the coast of New Guinea, which is what the Galileo Project and Dr. Loeb are currently doing. And here's what they found. One unusual wire that doesn't seem to correspond to any human technology, a hell of a lot of volcanic particles which are magnetic and have really been complicating the search, but one can expect that off the coast of New Guinea. And on top of that, something very interesting. S5 steel, quite a number of fragments of it, all flat and all corresponding to shock resistant steel resembling surface layers broken off of a technological object which experienced extreme material stress. Now, of course, this could come from some sort of shipwreck from a fairly advanced vessel, some kind of military vessel which uses this type of steel. However, these fragments were found over an area several kilometers in in size. In other words, I didn't just find them in one location, as one would expect with a shipwreck. Instead, they were found in many locations, which would correspond instead to a debris field from a falling object. Now, why would a meteor be made up of shock-resistant steel? That, of course, is impossible. Now, this isn't the sort of advanced super materials that one would expect, perhaps, from an advanced extraterrestrial civilization, but who's to say that they don't use the same types of steel that we do. Also, it has been postulated that the explosions that we witnessed, or rather detected, during the descent of this incredibly tough interstellar meteor may only have been the result of the outer layers of the object breaking apart and not the entire object disintegrating. It's possible that the core survived, and if so, there might be either a meteorite or something else lying on the bottom yet to be discovered, or perhaps the heat shield protecting this device broke apart and the actual object, or craft, continued to operate and made its way through our atmosphere to continue on its mission. And this will be very interesting if we find no evidence whatsoever of a meteor in this area, in other words, no magnetic pieces of a nickel-iron meteor whatsoever in the debris field, but we continue to find other pieces of manufactured material. Materials. One thing is certain, although a lot has been recovered from this site, no evidence of a meteor impact has turned up at all, which means that we could be on the edge of a major discovery off the coast of New Guinea. I, of course, will continue to keep you informed. Please smash that like, hit that subscribe, very important to my channel, and also check the description for various ways to keep supporting this content, and as always, stay angry about space.